All right, so you have your model, you have Kira. Now you need to get ready to have everything good to go. But what do you do? So first of all, you import your file into Kira. And we're gonna go over all this at the end in the last video. We're gonna take a random object, we're going to shove it into Kira, and we're gonna get a slice. So positioning of a print. This is probably the single most important thing you need to keep in mind when you're setting up a 3D print. Because you can make an object that is incredibly easily 3D printable become impossible. So if you look at the GIF playing right now, that is how you orient your print. So if you look at it there, it is currently a circle that is printed like this, perpendicular to the bed. That means that the only point of contact is that tiny little dot. And that's bad because if that's your only point of contact, it's going to immediately fall off because everything that is on the base layer is the layer that is going to stick to the bed. Everything above that very first layer is gonna be freestanding and going to be depending on that base layer to not fall off. So if you have basically no base layer, your print's not gonna stick and it's gonna fail because the print has to stick to the bed. So you always wanna position your part so that it has the most surface area touching the bed. So if I was to position this print like this, like I actually did, it would stick to the bed incredibly well. And like this, fail, like this, the entire bottom surface is stuck to the bed, it's not gonna go anywhere. So, you also wanna make sure that there are no islands. What islands are, say I'm 3D printing an object that's shaped like this. This is the bed, right? It's stuck right here. It prints up and up and up, and suddenly, right at this line right here, this just appears out of nowhere because it's not gonna connect. The printer can't go up and then back down. It has to do everything from bottom to top all at once. So this will just be floating here and that'll just fall to the ground. It'll just basically extrude a string of spaghetti because there's nothing to support it. So you need to make sure you don't have any islands. Overhangs are when you have an object like this that has an overhang. So it's printing like this. You can print pretty steep overhang. Just don't do that because then it can't, it can't print that because this is basically printing on nothing at that point. And then sometimes you may need to take your part and rip it into different pieces so that you can have it be functionally print. This was printed in many different pieces so that this could move, this could be printed this way. This was probably like six or seven parts. So if you follow all those steps, you'll usually be able to get a pretty successful print. The next thing you wanna keep in mind is the strength of your print because that is also determined by the way that you print it. So like I said with layer lines, PETG can mitigate this a little bit, but not a huge amount, not more than you'd expect. So these guys right here. On the left, there is the plain 3D model. In the middle is the object if it was printed like this, and on the right is the object if it was printed like this, straight up and down. Layer lines on 3D printers, they can only ever print the layers horizontally. It won't print the layers vertically because that physically wouldn't make any sense. So the guy on the right is actually sideways being printed. So wherever there's a layer line, that is a weak point because that is where there's not a continuous piece of plastic and those are just glued together. It's like if you were to take a bunch of pieces of like cardboard and glue them together. Those pieces of cardboard would be strong on its own, but everywhere that it's glued is a weak point because it's not the original piece. If you have the cardboard, say it's layered like this. If you try to break the cardboard this way, yeah, it'll rip. If you try to rip it this way, it's not gonna wanna go anywhere because it's all nice and strong. So on the guy in the middle, his legs would be the weakest where the arrows are pointing because those could be cleaved off by the layer lines. Same goes for the guy on the right's arms. Those are all little slice lines, so those are all weak points as well. However, his legs are a lot stronger because there's a solid layer going from his foot to the top of his head. So you have to keep this in mind when you're 3D printing an object. So pretend for a sec that this is a gear and you have the teeth going along it like this. If you print it flat, every single one of those gears is going to be on the same exact layer. And when all those gears are on the same exact layer, they're going to be nice and strong. It's going to be a solid piece. But if you print it like this, this bottom tooth is gonna be incredibly brittle because it's gonna have all these layer lines. The ones in the middle will be fine because they're connected from here to here. And then the ones at the top will break off. 
So if you try to put that into a machine, those teeth are just gonna snap off. But if you put a gear that was printed on a flat surface like this, it was printed flat, it's not gonna break. It's gonna break structurally at that point because all the layers are working together. So you always have to keep that in mind when it comes to aligning your print because if you don't, you could have something be really flimsy when it was actually designed really strong. Support material. You use this when you just can't have something that doesn't have overhangs or islands. So if you look at this bear, his hand, that's, that's an island, but you can't not have that be an island. There's no way to take that piece apart. There's no way to make it so that there, that won't be there. So you have to use support. Usually with organic shapes, those are the ones that are going to need supports. So on the right, that is the model without any supports. And on the left is with supports. You don't want to use supports unless you have to, because if you use supports, it'll mess up some things. So it's hard to remove in some cases because it's the same plastic being printed very close but not directly in contact with the part and that can adhere at different places and if it doesn't it doesn't do its job but it could adhere too much in some places and it could break your piece if it's a really weak point and also the cosmetics of your part are going to be changed so if you look at the bear's face right here it is nice and smooth it didn't have any support material but if you look at the base right here that had support material inside of it, it has all these white pock marks and little design errors going on there because that's where all the support was adhered. So if you're fine with sanding and cleaning up your part, then go ahead and print with supports and deal with the cosmetic damage. But you just have to be wary. Support material can go awry a lot of the time. Overhangs, you can always deal with. Most 3D printers can do an overhang of about 45 degrees. Anything beyond 45 degrees and the printer won't be able to do it. So think about this. This is an overhang. So it's printed this way, just pretend this is a long cylinder. You're going up, you're going up, and down here, that's a really steep overhang, right? So the layer would go this way and then it has to go a lot farther on the next layer to keep it from falling over. However, here, doesn't have a lot farther to stick out. It can print on that, but here it can't. So you just have to keep that in mind. And lastly is layer height and resolution. This can also help with your support material problems and overhangs. The thinner the layer, the steeper the overhang you can do, but it also increases the time. So if you have thick layers, like really beefy layers, like over here, 0.4 millimeters. If you have it be really fat layers, it'll print really fast. This little guy, he's about this big, he printed in 32 minutes. It looks really bad because you're not going to get high quality. It's going to look like an 8-bit character because the layers are a lot thicker, but it's really fast. So this is good to just test the physical size of something like, oh, I want to make sure this gear is the right size. Oh, I want to make sure these gears mesh properly. You just print that at a thick layer and then it'll just it'll do its thing. It's good. Next one is right in the middle, 0.2 millimeters. This is what a lot of people use as like their base. It's a good balance between time and detail. So you'll get a lot better detail. It'll double in detail. It'll also double in time. So an hour and five minutes, which is not bad, but it's a lot harder to see the layer lines and it's a lot easier to smooth them out. And also you'll have a lot better overhang issues. So like if you look over here, that overhang messed up, but on here, it didn't. And then there's the other end where the layers are super thin, 0.1 millimeters. That looks crisp, it looks clean, it looks really nice. However, that little guy that took a half an hour at 0.4 took over two hours on 0.1. So it really depends on what's important to you. If you want your print to look really nice, like it's a figurine, print at a thinner layer height. If you wanna just test and make sure it physically works, bigger layer height, like 0.4. And if you want right in the middle, you're just printing something to print, print at point two. So that is some pieces to slicing. We're gonna go over some more in the next video.